The world is preparing for the mass rollout of 5G networks. While the deployment of 5G requires financial investment, this gearing up with technology will also bring profitable long-term returns. Ultimately, 5G makes business faster and cheaper too. For operators, how can they seize a huge 5G business opportunity ahead through cooperation and innovation? Huawei invites Julian Watson, Principal Analyst at Omdia, to share his views. Welcome to Huawei 5G Live. I'm Professor Sally Eaves, and it's a real pleasure to be here today with Julian Watson from Omdia. Julian, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'd love to really dive into the business opportunity of 5G. And for your perspective, what are the kind of main investment trends in mobile communications, both globally and regionally, for the next 24 months? OK, so we'll see a real shift towards CapEx spending on 5G. So by about 2022, we see about 50% of um, RAN and, 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 and core um, mobile infrastructure spending by operators shifting towards 5G. And that's accelerated compared to the early days of 4G rollout. So operators are taking this opportunity very seriously. Thinking about carriers in the consumer market, where do you see the biggest revenue opportunities there? Probably going ahead maybe to five year timescale. I think the main commercial opportunities will be via the smartphone. So we're talking about really immersive experiences through AR, VR, Absolutely. Video, which obviously has driven uh, 4G network utilization, uh, really delivering experiences such as you know, 360 degree viewing of live sport events, um, very high definition streaming, um, that there seems to be a willingness among consumers to adopt. Definitely incredible kind of personalization of experience on the go opportunity there, isn't it? It's quite exciting. And kind of thinking now from an operator's perspective, where do you see the 5G construction investment at the moment, the spending strategies around that? So I think in the near term, the focus is on the deployment of non-standalone networks. Um, that will change over the uh, next year or so as we see more operators shift towards standalone. And what standalone will bring is you know, much greater bandwidth, much lower latency, and opening, opening up opportunities beyond consumer mm -hmm. into the URLCC or mission critical side of things in the industrial space, in the port space, in the mining space, and also a, an extension of the existing sort of massive IoT opportunity. These millions of low power devices like smart meters, such as asset tracking, that we are seeing some adoption through NBIoT and LTM at the moment. Fantastic. And then kind of one final question then to really seize this 5G opportunity again from the operator's perspective. Where do you think the investment strategy should lie? What, what should be the main focus area right now and looking ahead a little bit further? Well, I think the main challenge for operators is actually to monetize 5G. Um, it's not going to be about selling data plans. Mm -hmm. It's going to be about delivering dedicated performance levels, both mm -hmm. for consumers and for industries as well. What does that mean, um, you know, developing monetization through network slices around dedicated levels of latency and bandwidth? And for consumers and the, the partners of operators, it, again, it means, you know, making sure that you can guarantee the right levels of bandwidth performance and latency to deliver sort of 4K streaming, 8K streaming in the future. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Julian. Great insights there, I think, across technology and also innovation through partnership, I think. Thank you very much for sharing. Thanks very much.